I have a thing about rules in the government, and that is they only work if they're respected. And if the rationale for a rule is specious or arbitrary, it not only is frustrating for people who are impacted by the rule, it undermines every other rule that is promulgated by the government. Which brings me to the rule on personal electronic devices on airplanes. It appears to me to not be grounded in any kind of data or evidence whatsoever. Um, and so I would first ask you, Mr. Huerta, I have searched, I have asked, I have interviewed many, many experts, my staff has. Is there some scientific data that is hiding from my staff that would indicate uh, a Kindle being on during takeoff could have any possibility whatsoever of interfering with the electronics of an airplane? The question has more to do with, so first of all, let me back up. This is a matter that is of great personal interest to me. And uh, one of the things that I um, have asked is for our staff through an Air aviation rulemaking committee to look into the nature of these rules and are there things that we could do to change them in the future. The rules that currently govern the use of portable electronic devices have been around, as you mentioned, for a very long time. And the current rulemaking framework is set up such that any airline can conduct tests to determine if there are and prove that there is no interference. And if that proof is made, then they would be free to adopt uh, the, uh, a program for portable electricity. And I'm aware of all that. That's, as you know, very impractical for each individual airline to take on the costs of testing each individual instrument and making some certification to you on each individual interest, instrument by each individual airline. Um, let me ask it this way. Is the rule, is this supposed to apply to general aviation? Uh, the rule, is, that's a good question. Um, the rule as it's currently designed is, uh, focuses on commercial aviation. And um, I don't know. I'll have to get back to you with that. Well, I, I will tell you that it is not followed in general mm -hmm. aviation. Mm -hmm. um, people are not told to turn off their electronic devices because everyone who flies those airplanes knows that they're not a risk. Let me tell you this story. This happened many, many times as I was on a lot of airplanes the last two years. Uh, a woman who clearly was flying for the first time, we were going out to the runway and almost tearfully she grabbed the flight attendant as she went by and said, oh my God, I have left my cell phone on and it's in the overhead. She was very upset. And the flight attendant, of course, said what I've heard flight attendants say a million times, don't worry about it. Stay seated and in your seatbelt, right? So she knew that phone was on up in the overhead and we were taking off. She was crying in her seat because she was sure she was gonna bring down that airplane. And as you well know, there are dozens of people that inadvertently leave their phones on during takeoff and landing or leave on something else during takeoff and landing. The pilots are using iPads right now. These electromagnetic signals do not stack. There's not any difference scientifically between one iPad in the, in the cockpit and 400 in the airplane. And your people are still telling us that even if the ARC makes a rule recommendation, that they're still gonna recommend not during takeoff and landing, even if it's just for a few minutes. And I, you know, and, and in your rule, you actually say that it's about distraction and missing significant safety announcements and personal injury. I've never had a flight attendant say, put down your copy of War and Peace, which would be a much bigger personal injury and just as much of a distraction as reading War and Peace on a Kindle, except a Kindle would be a lot safer. So this is a great example of a rule that really is arbitrary at this point. And I am anxious for someone to document to me why there is any reason that the flying public should made to feel insecure about someone next to them who hasn't turned it off quickly enough. I don't think you realize the tension that's on an airplane around this. I mean, the flight attendants get tense. The people who don't turn them off, somebody sitting next to you, they haven't turned them off. They get worried. They think they're going to crash. I, I just feel really strongly that this is a great example of a rule that needs to go away. And so I would ask you, if there is scientific data 
that is going to support continuing this rule in any way beyond the ARC's recommendation, which I understand is going to come in July. And by the way, I would like you to make those, that process open. They're closed now. There's no reason. Their, their considerations should not be closed. They should be open. If, if we're not going to be able to have a new rule by Christmas, I would really like something in writing from you on the record as to what the problem would be around that. Certainly. You, as you said, the ARC will complete its rule during the summer, and the reason that we convened the, uh, the rulemaking committee was to look at precisely the question that you're talking about, and it is made up of all of the interests, uh, not just those that um, are in support, but also those that have operational concerns about how it would actually be implemented, how any changes would be implemented. And I'm very much looking forward to the findings, and we will act on them. And, and w when you look into the GA question that I asked, if you would also look into whether or not there's an announcement made on Air Force One that all devices must be turned off. Certainly. Because if it's safe enough for the President of the United States, it's safe enough for the, for the flying public. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.